Alright, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Justin Brown for the Epic Goss, amazing episode of the Messianic Torah Keeper of Yeshua Mashiach uh, YouTube channel or Messianic Bible Observant Follower of Yeshua Mashiach YouTube channel. Today, in this video, we're going to talk about don't get tricked into death. Don't get tricked by the trick or treat, okay? I'm going to tell you, Miss Piggy's running around out there. She's real, okay? What do I mean by that? I mean that there are lots of men and women out there they might look good, they might have a fine set of hair, they might have a fine body, but underneath they are swine. Stay away from them, okay? Unless you're sent to confront them or preach them or whatever, you have to do them, just, but don't get intermingled with them, okay? Don't don't get in relationships with them or anything like that. It's it's going to lead you to death. It's a way that seems right to men, but in the end, it's sin and death. We'll just start today with Isaiah uh, 40, chapter 40. I think we start in uh, verse 6 here, and this is a good news translation. It's a good news, uh, today's English version, good news Bible translation. A voice cries out, proclaim a message. What message shall I proclaim, I ask? Proclaim that all mankind are like grass, that last no longer than wild flowers. Than wild flowers. Grass withers and flowers fade when Yahweh sends the wind blowing over them. People are no more enduring than grass. Yes, grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of Yahweh endures forever. And no, this is not a restored name Bible. I add the restored names. But it is not uh, from the Texas Receptus, which means it's not anti-law. It's not outlaw. It, it has, doesn't have any modified or added verses in it, as far as I know. I don't know what text it does come from, but I know Texas Receptus has added uh, words and verses to the Bible about, I guess, I was told it was 500 AD. And you can go online, you can check for differences like the book of Acts versus Textus Receptus and others. So, as much as I like the King James Version, the New Covenant has verses that are added. And that's verified by fans of the King James because they say their Bible has verses nobody else does. And it's also got text added in uh, where originally it wasn't there. Okay, like for example, in uh, Acts, in the book of Acts, it'll say, uh, they're doing things that we didn't tell them to do. And then the ad added text says, they're keeping the law and circumcising people, and we didn't tell them to do that. That's the added text. That's not the original. So they didn't speak against the law. They didn't speak against circumcision uh, in, in some of those verses, at least not the way it's being done. Okay, that You don't have to be circumcised to receive salvation. That's very clear. Paul makes that very clear. But he, he had Timothy circumcised. He's not against the law of circumcision. Okay? So we're going to get into the trick or treat. Don't get tricked. That's one way to get tricked right there is to get a modified uh, Bible that's been mo been based on modified manuscripts. Don't do that. Okay, get the original. Stick with the original manuscripts. As far as we know, and it could be wrong, the original manuscripts that have survived, the ones that have survived, the Aramaic, Peshitta, and they were handed by Timothy to the Church of the East between 50 to 70 A.D., according to the Church of the East. That's when they received them from Timothy. So, as far as we know, and I could be wrong, those may be the most original manuscripts there are. If I could read Aramaic, I could probably verify that and tell you if there's what differences, what they actually say. Um, to get one of those Bibles so I can read it, translated like into English, it's like $500. So, right now, don't have $500. If I had money for electricity... I wouldn't, I mean, it's a good idea anyway, but I wouldn't have to have this blanket over the door to keep the, the cold air from coming because it's like a metal door and I just, I'm trying to insulate the house. It's wintertime. I could go to my video studio and I could record videos right now. It's like really cold over there. I'd have to put on a bunch of coats and coveralls right now if I wanted to go to the video studio because it is about 46 degrees Fahrenheit in a video studio right now. So I'm recording this from the house. So, if you guys want to support me and help me out, that's great. I want to do ministry, and I want to try to get the ads off my videos, because I don't like those ads they put on my videos. The seventh month, the seventh biblical month, is Ethanim, and I'm sure that's probably not how it's pronounced, so you can look it up and listen to somebody else, but it is E-T-H-A-N-I-M, the month of the day of Yahweh, okay? A blessing or a curse. It's a blessing for those who keep the law and do the feasts and the holy days and the Sabbaths, and it's a curse for those who do not, who will not repent. And so the Feast of Trumpets, which was September 27th this year to September 28th because of when the new moon was actually visible, 
when it was cited. Um, if you're going by that, it was the 20, started the night of the 27th to 20, which is also the night my grandmother passed away this year. And so I got to blow the trumpets first before she passed away. And there's verses about when the last trumpet sounds, we'll all rise again, and go to heaven. So it's kind of an interesting way to think about it. But anyway, uh, Yom Teruah is the Feast of Trumpets, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And, uh, and so we got to keep his laws. We got to follow him. And then Yom, Yom, actually it's Yom. It's not Yom. It's Yom, I've been told. Yom Kippurim or Kippur. Kippur is, I think, the singular form. And Kippurim is, I think, multiple, meaning multiple trumpets. Is a day of, or sorry, no, atonements. Atonements. Kippur is atonement. Kippurim is atonements. A day of fasting, which this year was October 6th to 7th. I'm just saying it because... When we try to follow the biblical calendar, we got to know when it starts and stops. And having the secular calendar just as a reference, it can be helpful. Okay, especially if you're not publishing this video the same day. And, you know, it, it can be confusing. So, just using it as a reference. And I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I, I would like to not have to do that. Okay, then Yom Kippur. Oh, sorry, Sukkot. Sukkot is the Feast of Tabernacles and Feast of Booths, including the eighth day afterwards, which... I believe it's the day of ingathering, and uh, it, it's also called the festival of, of ingathering as well, or feast of ingathering. And so Sukkot Booths was the 11th to the 19th this year, if you're going by the lunar calendar, when we could spot the moon, when we could spot the new moon coming, okay? Not just when they said it was going to happen, when you could actually physically see the moon in the sky. Uh, Israel would have started a day earlier on these feasts because they didn't go by when they could see the moon in the sky. They went by when the mathematics had predicted there would be a new moon in the sky even if they couldn't see it. All right. And I don't think it was just hidden by clouds. It just wasn't visible very well in the North Hemisphere as far as what I've been told. So the next thing is Zechariah. So these are the days we're supposed to be keeping instead of Halloween. People are getting tricked out of Halloween. I've, I've invited people. I'm like, hey, let's do what the Bible says. Let's keep these feast days. And they're like, nope, I'm keeping Halloween. And these are Christian people that go to church. Okay? And they want to keep Halloween and put Halloween decorations up and trick or treat and participate. But they do not, absolutely do not want to have anything to do with obeying the rules and the command feasts that say they're forever and holy days in the scripture. I believe there's only three feasts and the rest are just holy days, if I've got it right. I'm, I'm sorry if I screwed that up. I'm, I'm trying my best here, okay? I had some criticism. I tried to do this video once already before, and I had criticism, so I'm trying to make up for any mistakes I made in the past doing this video, okay? Your criticisms are helpful, by the way. So, Zechariah 14, 18 through 19, and if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And these feasts have already come and gone this year. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, as far as I know, the Bible says the only thing that it, we don't have to do, we should do it, but may not have to do it if you're not a native-born Israelite, you're not born in Israel, uh, you don't have to stay in the tent, the tabernacle, during the Feast of Tabernacles. But I could be wrong on that, but but it says that all native-born Israelites must do it. So I uh, assume, I'm just assuming that means that non-native-born Israelites don't have to do it, but you should do it. You should obey what the Bible says, okay? Um, especially if you consider yourself a grafted in Israelite like Paul talks about. John 12, 19-23, The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how... Uh, ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. The whole world, according to them, is following the Savior, who shall Hamashiach, when he's going to the feasts. It says, And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. So the Greeks and the whole world is coming after the Savior now, and they're keeping the feast. The same came, therefore, to Philip, which was Bersida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see uh, Yahushua. And Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Yeshua, and Yeshua answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Okay, the Apostle Paul, 
after Christ's death and resurrection indicated that it was important to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, as noted in Acts 18, chapter 18, verse 21. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 41, 1 through 7. Now it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of uh, Nathaniah, the son of Elishma of the seed royal, and the princes of the king, even ten men with him, came unto uh, Gedaliah, the son of Achim, to Mizpah. And there they did eat bread together. That's the treat, right? We talk about trick-or-treat. We're going to find trick-or-treat a couple places in the Bible here where there's treats and there's a trick together. Okay? So first they eat bread together in Mizpah. That's the treat. Okay? Then arose Ishmael, the son of Nathanian. Uh, Nathania, I don't know how to say that. And uh, it's probably Nathania. And the ten men that were with him and smote Gedaliah, the son of Achim, the son of uh, Saphon, with the sword, and slew him whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Ishmael also slew all the Jews that were with him, even in Gilead at Mizpah, and the Chaldeans that were found there, the men of war. And it came to pass the second day after he had slain Gilead that uh, no man knew it, and there came certain from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, even fourscore men, having their beards shaven and their clothes rent, and having cut themselves with offerings and incense in their hand to bring them to the house of Yahweh. That sounds like how some people dress and look on Halloween, doesn't it? And Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, went forth from Mizpah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. And it came to pass, as he met them, he said unto them, Come, to Gedaliah the son of Achim, and it was so when they came into the midst of the city, the Ishmael son of Nathanael slew them and cast them in the midst of the pit. And he, uh, he and the men that were with him, also you can see in Second Kings, twenty-five verse twenty-five. Now I think it says this happened in the seventh month, if I'm correct. I'm looking back here to see because a lot of these verses, yes, it says this happened in the seventh month, which is this month of. Uh, Yom, Yom Kippur and these other days which is the day of Yahweh and the month of Yahweh it's the time of his judgment that's why we blow the trumpets the, the, the feast of trumpets is to let people know the day of the Lord is coming the day of Yahweh is coming you need to repent and get ready and people say well that's not new covenant that's well I'm going to tell you what first of all there's seven covenants in the Bible and each covenant adds the previous one it doesn't get rid of it Next, I'm going to tell you that in the New Covenant, we do read about this same type of thing for communion. We're instructed to prepare ourselves, to look at ourselves, to analyze ourselves before we partake in communion. Well, what comes after um, Yom Teruah, Feast of Trumpets? Well, it's Yom Kippurim, the Day of Atonement, the day which is all about repentance. It's all about the Day of Yahweh. If you don't prepare yourself, it's preparing yourself for communion, which is Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Booth. It's all about him coming down to dwell with us and, and spend time with us, the tabernacle with us, and then we come together. So that's the celebration. The celebration is the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, um, which comes after the Yom Kippurim, which is when we need to look back and reflect and say, We've sinned, and we're not going to do it anymore. We're going to be forgiven. We think about forgiveness. We think about the sacrifice on the cross for our sins. And so this is all, This is it's really not anything new. It's, it's in the first six covenants, right? Not all the first six covenants, but it's within the first six covenants uh, before the seventh covenant, the new covenant. And it all just gets repeated as far as, as far as the way things work. It all just repeats itself. And the followers of Yeshua, the authors of the New Covenant that wrote the books, they kept the feasts, they kept the holy days, they kept the Sabbaths on the Sabbath day. Now, someone was telling me that they've got extra biblical books, books outside the Bible that say that after the resurrection, they switched to Sunday instead of the Sabbath. But that was the Catholic Church. That was Rome, that was Greece, that was the Catholic Church. That was not the first century church. Okay, the first century church followed the Savior, and did what the Savior did and followed the covenants. They followed the law. They kept the law. Paul testified that he did. He proved that he did. So did Stephen. Stephen was put to death by false witnesses that said that him and the Savior were against the law. Now, if we read, we read about Ishmael, 
Um, because it's a day of Yahweh. It's a day of Yahweh when his judgment comes. So Ishmael came, fulfilled Yahweh's judgment on the Jews that were not following Yahweh. They were doing something wrong. Because usually, I mean, that's what we usually read when there's judgment, right? When there's destruction. Jeremiah 20, 15 through 17, Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah, the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, Yahweh hath not sent thee, but thou makest his people to trust in a lie. Therefore thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth, this year shalt thou die, because thou hast taught rebellion against Yahweh. So Hanai prophet died the same year in the seventh month again, this seventh month. Zechariah chapter 7, verses 5 through 14, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years did ye at all fast unto me, even unto me, and when ye did eat, when ye did drink, and did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? It says, did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves. Should ye not hear the words which Yahweh hath cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her, when men inhabited the south and the plain? And the word of Yahweh came to Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken, and pulled away the shoulder, and stopped their ears, that they should not hear. Ye, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law, and the words which Yahweh of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets, therefore came a great wrath from Yahweh of hosts. Remember, we got to keep the law and the prophets. That's what the new covenant says. Otherwise, we come under his wrath. It's a, otherwise, then we'd be, we're no longer free from the law of sin and death. If we, if we refuse to follow the instructions in the Bible and his voice through the spirit and the prophets, if we refuse to do that, then we're going to come under his wrath. Okay? When he tells us what to do, and we know we're supposed to do it, and we refuse... Then we come under the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death is not the Torah. It's not the Bible. It's the consequence of sin. And 1 John tells us that sin is the transgression of the law, of the Torah. So all you've got to do is replace the word sin all over in the Bible with the transgression of the law. Because the Bible says that's the definition of sin. And then you can comprehend what sin is, and what you're supposed to be doing, what you're not supposed to be doing. It's very simple. Children can understand. Children can figure it out. Therefore it is come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, saith Yahweh of hosts. But, see, when they won't listen to the prophet, Yahweh won't listen to them. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among the nations whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. Nehemiah 8 verse 1. And the people and all the people gathered as one man at the square which was in front of the water gate. And they asked Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moshe, which Yahweh had given to Israel. Leviticus 25 4. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. We're talking clearly about the seventh month. Shall be a Sabbath rest unto the land in the seventh year. The Sabbath for Yahweh, thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. Okay? Leviticus 23 mentions all the feasts. Don't exchange the biblical commanded forever feasts and holy days for the doctrines and commandments of men and pagan festivals. Don't do that. Okay? And we got to make sure the twist truth, Reverend Twist Truth, doesn't get in this video. Okay? I've, I've had some problems uh, with um, with hacking or something, something going on. And it seems like he's hacking his way into my videos. So watch this video to the end and make sure that Reverend Twist Truth doesn't like hack my video and get in here and start spreading his propaganda. You'll have to see here. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm being sarcastic, of course, about him hacking into the video. Obviously, I have control over the video, but you might see him. It might appear that he's hacked into the video just because it'll be entertaining. Okay? So, Nehemiah 7.73. So, the priests... And the Levites, and the porters, and the singers, and some of the people, and the Nithinims, and all Israel dwelt in their cities. And when the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. Okay? And the source for that one is bible.knowing-jesus.com forward slash topic 
month dash seven, and that's uppercase month at the beginning and then dash seven. Leviticus twenty three thirty three through forty four. And Yahweh spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifth, fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto Yahweh. On the first day shall be a holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. These are the feasts of Yahweh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon his day. Beside the Sabbaths of Yahweh, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your freewill offerings, which ye give unto Yahweh, also the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto Yahweh seven days. And on the first shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before Yahweh your Elohim seven days. And ye shall keep a feast unto Yahweh seven days in the year, and it shall be a statute forever... In your generations ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That's where it's saying that if you're born in Israel, you got to dwell in booths seven days. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your Elohim. And Moshe declared unto the children of Israel the feasts of Yahweh. And by the way, the consequences of not following these feasts and holy days is bad okay sometimes it's being kicked out of israel sometimes it's being put to death uh especially i think if you eat on yom kippur there's there's a big uh problem if you do that you can read your bible and find out so you need to fast on yom kippur very important fast all day do no work and reflect on you know whether or not you you what you've done in the last year things that you need to change ask for forgiveness worship you know do what the bible says that's a big deal okay it used to be a day of offering sacrifices, and now we can think about Yahushua Mashiach as the final sacrifice for our sins. Numbers chapter 29, 35, verses 35 through 39. On the eighth day ye shall have a solemn assembly, ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet Savior unto Yahweh, one bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year without blemish, their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullock, for the ram, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. These things ye shall do unto Yahweh in your set feast beside your vows, and your freewill offerings, for your burnt offerings, and for your meat offerings, and for your drink offerings, and for your peace offerings. Exodus 31.16 Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for perpetual covenant. There's no point where it gets abolished. Amos, I believe it's chapter 3, verse 7, says that Yahweh does nothing unless he first tells the prophets. There's nothing in the Bible about abolishing or changing the Sabbath day to Sunday. That's what the pastors have confirmed. The people in the seminaries have confirmed it. Everyone has confirmed that there's nothing in the Bible that changes the Sabbath to Sunday. In fact, when Rome, Greece, Constantine, and the Roman Catholic Church, when they decided to worship on the venerable day of the sun, which is what they called it, instead of the Sabbath day, which is the sundown on the sixth day until sundown on the seventh day. All right, that's the Sabbath. It's it's basically almost all of the seventh day and, and what we would call the night. You see, the nights in the Bible, the days in the Bible begin when the sun goes down. Okay, not not according to midnight. It's it's a different it's a different thing. The Bible is different than the ways of man, okay? So we got to do it forever. That's what the Bible says. There's nothing in it that changes that. It says when Yeshua Mashiach returns on earth, the prophet said that they, he's going to restore the law and the, the Feast of Tabernacles, and the law would include all the other feasts as well. He said he didn't come to abolish. Think not. He said, think not that he came to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them, okay? And so the, don't, don't think about it. Don't even think that he did it, because he said not to. Don't think that he came to, to abolish the law of the prophets, because he didn't. He came to complete them 
because by completing them, it says, hey, he is the Messiah. He is Hamashiach because he he did what it said. He brought it true. He brought the law and the prophets true. The prophet said this is going to happen. The law says this is what you got to do. He made both of those true by completing them, by doing what they said. Now, some Jews that are non-Messianic and non-Christian, they will try to say he's only kept some of these prophecies, and that's true because he's coming back. When he comes back, that's when he's going to force everyone to observe the Feast of Tabernacles and do all these other things that were prophesied that have not yet come to pass. And everyone believes that these are Messianic prophecies. So, you know, we know it's going to happen. These people try to live in denial and say the law has been abolished. The last six covenants were abolished. But guess what? They still say they're going to keep all the blessings from the six covenants and the laws that they like. So if they there's a law that where they, that it's not a law, by the way, but where uh, Abraham gave a tenth of all he had to Melchizedek, they'll say, oh, look, we like that. That's before the law. We like that. We're going to bring that in the church. We're going to say, you have to give us a tenth of all you have. Even though the Bible defines tithes as food, seed, and drink. And a lot of times, you give it to the poor. You give it to the porters, you give it to the needy, you give it to the widows, the orphans. There's lists throughout the Bible. You really need to check it out. Just do a Bible study on tithing. Um, the, the worshipers, I believe, if I'm correct, if they that's their job, is they just worship in the church, they worship in the temple, and they need to get paid, they need something to eat. Tithe can help them. They're poor and needy. The porters, the ones that clean and open the door and everything in the church, if that's what they do, and they don't get paid much, they don't get paid enough, they don't have food, then the tithe would go to them. Okay, you got you got to think about these things here. It's it's not I and mean, you don't it's not give tithe to the rich rich pastor that's got a boat and a and a private jet and a flying saucer and a UFO and uh, gold bricks and and it's SUV and all. The, no, it's you could give to the poor. And the needy. We know in the Gospels that Yeshua HaMashiach told the rich man that if he wanted to get into heaven, if he wanted salvation, he had to go sell all he had, give it to the poor, which is treating the least of these, right? However you've done the least of these, you've done unto him. That's helping the least of these by doing that. And he wouldn't do that. So if you got mega pastor and he's wealthy like that, like the rich man in the Bible, he may need to sell a lot of that stuff he has and give it to the poor if he wants salvation because that's what the gospel says. Okay? You can try to say that's salvation by works. Um, you can't be saved by works. The only way we can be saved is by the sacrifice on the cross. But whether it's the new covenant or the old covenants, they could sacrifice all they wanted to in the temple. We got a sacrifice on the cross and the Savior. But either way, if they erected uh, pagan deities in the same in the same building um then yahweh wouldn't listen to them and they were doomed they could go back and forth between baal and and ashtoreth and ishtar and all that easter um and which is what they call it today what the church called today's easter used to be called uh, ishtar go back and forth before all those things incorporate them into the church into the temple and he says he's not going to hear you and he's not going to help you and also you're going to be wiped out and the people that wipe you out says he's going to bless them protect them, and they're not going to have any consequences. And that's what happened in 2015. The Islamic people came in, destroyed 69 churches with pagan images in them, and destroyed uh, a bunch of pagan temples. There was one that was the Temple of Baal, and there was another one. They destroyed them, and the news said it was terrible. But guess what? There was no repercussions. They went in with uh, machinery you know, to destroy these buildings. They showed them going with jackhammers and stuff. It's like nobody stopped them. Nobody came in and told them they had to get out. They went in very detailed. Um, destroyed all of the paganism, all the pagan things. And so the Bible says will happen. He'll stir up people to do that. Even if they are, even if they're Islamic, whatever, it doesn't matter. He'll stir up people to go in and do that. And you can worship, you can spend as much money and time as you want to trying to worship who you call Jesus, Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahweh. You can spend, Isaiah says you can spend all this time and money doing it, but if you do it in the way the pagans do, you're going to be judged. You're going to be wiped out. That's what, what he says. So, you know, he has grace, I think, especially for people that are ignorant. But you were learning the truth, okay? Children know the truth. They know there's no Santa Claus. Um, you know, so you can't worship the way the pagans do. I, I went into a church. It's got an image of Jupiter on the left. It's got an image of Tammuz. And it's got an image of Ishtar. And they just put a different label. The, the Catholic Church 
in Rome, they put a different label on these images. They've got them at the Vatican. They've got a giant image of, of Jupiter that says Peter on it. So we see the images of Peter, and they're actually Jupiter, and he's got the sun burst around his head. That's the key, because Constantine worshipped Apollo, the sun, and so uh, and Baal. Baal is the sun. Okay, that's where it all comes from. And so when you see these pagan deities that are that are rebranded as Christian, as saints, you usually see a sun burst around their head, which like the Statue of Liberty, so the spy spokes coming out, or it's just a big round disc like the sun, and sometimes it's got spokes in it or spikes in it or a design of some kind. And then you see the halos, and the halos, it seems... I, I think maybe more research needs to be done just so we know for sure how they relate. But it appears that the halo is just an extension of the sunburst, that it's supposed to be uh, just another version of the same thing. Deuteronomy 12, uh, 20 through 32. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee and thy children after thee forever. When thou doest what that which is good and right, what's good and right? Keeping these words, the law, that's what's good and right. In the sight of Yahweh thy Elohim, when Yahweh, it says, Thou doest what is good and right in the sight of Yahweh thy Elohim, when uh, Yahweh thy Elohim shall cut off the nations before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their Elohim, saying, How did these nations serve their Elohim? How did they do it? They did it with a Tammuz tree that's now called the Christmas tree. They call they would have called it the Tammuz tree. Okay, they put ornaments on it. They put gifts under it, and they did it to Baal and Tammuz and Ishtar. That's that's so. I'll tell you. I'll tell you how they did it. They what they did is according to the Babylonian legends um, of Baal and Nimrod. There was Nimrod and Samaramis. Okay. And Nimrod died, and Sam Ramus wanted to keep things going, wanted to keep the kingdom going. So she said that she was giving birth to a son that was going to be her Nimrod reincarnated. But Nimrod, after he died, they called him Baal. He's the sun deity, they said. That's what they say. Is he's the sun deity in the sky. And then after that, uh, she, she had to get pregnant again by somebody. Because apparently Nimrod could never get her pregnant. I don't know. She got pregnant. And she gave birth to a baby named Tammuz, and she said it was Baal reincarnated, Nimrod reincarnated. And so then there was a Tammuz tree. There was a pine tree that she said grew up overnight. That was by a virgin birth. That she she nobody had sex with her. She got pregnant from the sun because the sun was Nimrod was Baal. And that was Baal reincarnated, and that's the first Christmas. Okay, so this is just one thing. There's like a, at least eight days out of the year. There's more than that that are pagan days. And they have been turned into Christian days. Instead of following the biblical commanded, we just read them, the feasts, the holy days, the Sabbaths. Instead of following those, they outlawed those. Constantine made those illegal. And that's the trick, right? And then he treated people to Christmas and Halloween and all these other things. You get candy. I don't know if he started Halloween. I don't know who started it. But you get your candy, you get your ice cream, you get your presents, you get your cakes with candles on them. That's the treat. You've been tricked to, to not follow the Bible, and you're going to get a treat every time that you do the trick. Every time you do the paganism, you're going to get a treat. Now, in the Old Covenant, they got a treat. Uh, it wasn't just gifts. Uh, when you followed Baal, you got to have sex with temple prostitutes that were usually, as far as I know, they were tied to poles in the temple, and it could only be sodomy. It had to be sodomy in order for them to be uh, temple prostitutes that had never been penetrated any other way, and then they considered them to be virgins. Um, and they kept them in the temple, and that was the treat. The men would, go, and probably the women, they go in and treat themselves to the prostitutes in the temple, okay? So it's all about giving the people what they crave, what they lust after. And, and you give them a pagan day that's after a pagan deity, and then tell them it's Christian. Tell them it's Christian. Tell them we all got to come together and do this now, because Constantine, the Catholic Church, has said it's Christian. What is Christian? Well, the word Christian was invented by the pagans to describe the Catholic Church. Um, I don't know that they ever put that label on the way, on, on the people who followed the way, the first century church, but they definitely applied it to the Catholics. And then they started meeting in pagan temples. They, they took the, the Christians, started meeting in the pagan temples instead of 
instead of the churches, the churches were in houses. They were in, in, in houses. Instead, they came out of the houses. They went to the big pagan temples and celebrated there. And they left the pagan images there. And they might change the name on them from Jupiter to Peter and, and Tammuz to Jesus and from Ishtar to Mary. But they're the same images. And then they put up the obelisks. And eventually, after they put up obelisks, they decide to start putting up steeples because steeples are the same as obelisks. They just have a cross on the top. And you go to the Catholic Vatican and you see a giant obelisk with a cross on the top. First the sun, because it added the sun first because it worshipped the sun of Baal. Then they added a cross on top and that's a steeple. That's what it is. And they have one at the Vatican. It's it's an, actually an Egyptian obelisk transported there by Constantine. I don't know how he did it. I don't know if he did it with horses and carriages, boats. I don't know how they transported this giant obelisk clear to the Vatican from Egypt. I, I don't know how they did it. Um, Take heed to thyself that thou be not... And of course it's on the solar wheel for all the pagan deities that they worshipped. And there's more than just the solar wheel. But they, they did that. It's all in the Vatican. And, and they also put the solar wheel in the synagogues. They put it in the floors of the synagogues there. You can still see it um, with the paintings of the deities. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their Elohim, saying, How did these nations serve their Elohim? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto Yahweh thy Elohim. For every abomination Yahweh which he hateth have they done unto their Elohim, for even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their Elohim. What then today, it's abortion, it's, you know, however you want to do it. What things soever I command you, observe it and do it, and thou shalt not add thereto or diminish from it. Now, in instead of doing abortion today, some people, instead, they get rid of the elderly. You can get rid of the unborn, you can get rid of the elderly. doesn't matter. Whichever one's the inconvenience um, that you want to get rid of, you, that's, you, know, you want to sacrifice... Um, they do it. They even do it to people in the middle of their life. You know, sacrifice them. Tell them to go kill themselves. They, they do that. They told me to go kill myself. So you got to stay away from that. First Samuel 28, 1 through 25. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. And Achish said unto Dawid, which is King Dawid, David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle. Thou and thy men... And Dawid said to Achish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Achish said to Dawid, which is King David again, Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. Now Samuel, some people I've heard say Samuel, Samuel was dead, and, and Israel had lamented him, and buried him in Ramah, even his own city. And Saul had put away uh, those that familiar spirits and the wizards out of their land. So remember, Saul is getting rid of the witches. He's getting rid of those with familiar spirits and wizards. He's getting them out of the land. He knows it's wrong. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in uh, Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Geboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul acquired, uh, or it could be Shaul, Saul inquired of Yahweh. Yahweh answered him not, neither by dreams nor by Urim. Or by the prophets. I'm not sure if Saul is pronounced Shaul in Hebrew. You'd have to ask somebody else because I haven't learned that yet. Um, and then Saul uh, then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that the familiar spirit. So now he's going to find the witch. First he had the witches put to death and the wizards. Now he's going to go find one because he's afraid. And, uh, and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit in Endor. Now Saul did trick or treat before this happened. So he went out and he treated himself to stuff that his enemies had and brought it back. And Yahweh told him he was supposed to wipe them all out, have nothing to do with them, get rid of all the, I think it was Amalekites. He was supposed to get rid of them. He didn't do that. Instead, he treated himself and brought stuff back. That was the first trick or treat uh, that I, I believe I know of of Saul. And now Saul is going to get tricked again. He's going to this witch in Endor and this is the trick. And Saul disguised himself and put on other remnant, and he went, and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by familiar spirit, and I bring a me him up whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said, And behold, thou knowest that Saul hath done what Saul hath done now. He hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. Wherefore hath layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? 
And Saul swear by her to Yahweh, saying, He's swearing to Yahweh that he's not going to kill a witch, saying, As Yahweh liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. It's a trick again. You're getting tricked here. Loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid. For what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw Elohim ascending out of the earth. And Elohim, again, is a spirit being. That's what the word Elohim in its plural. Elohim is plural. So she said she saw an Elohim coming out of the earth. I don't know if it said El in Hebrew originally, an El or an Eloah coming out, but that would have been a description of, of Samuel because um, it could uh, the word El or can refer to or Elohim Eloah can refer to an angel. It can refer to a mighty one, like even a pagan deity. It can refer to all kinds of things. So it can also be used to describe Samuel after he was dead, coming back. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said unto Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and Elohim is departed from me. Now Elohim in this case is the Elohim of Elohims, which is Yahweh. Okay, so when you see the Bible using the word Elohim to refer to Yahweh, it's because he is the El of Elohims or the Elohim of Elohims, depending on what version of, you know, if you believe in the Trinity or if you believe that he's three separate persons that are one in spirit, that are united. Because um, some people believe that the Catholic doctrine of Trinity, that there's one Yahweh, right, and that he operates as three different persons. Other people believe that the the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Av, the Ben, and the Ruach Kadesh, are actually three distinct individual parties, and that when it says they're one, it's kind of like a marriage or a group that's working as one together. So that's what Elohim refers to. It refers to the three, the, and then there's seven spirits in Revelation. So you know you could be seven. It doesn't matter. There's Elohim is multiple. He's Yahweh is Elohim. He's multiple. Okay. He is, that's how Genesis starts, the bare sheet, uh, the first book of the Bible starts with him being Elohim. Okay, Elohim is there and talking to himself, let us make for a man, uh, ourselves, you know, let us make this and let us make that. So, for the Philistines make war against me and Elohim is departed from me and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, saying, Yahweh is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? And Yahweh hath done to him as he spake by me, for Yahweh hath rent the kingdom out of thy hand, and give it to thy neighbor, even Dawid, King David, because thou obeyest not the voice of Yahweh, nor executest his fierce wrath upon him, Elmech. Therefore Yahweh done, uh, Yahweh done this thing unto thee this day. He doesn't say Yahweh hath done, just as Yahweh done. However, Yahweh will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Yahweh also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Now I am reading from a restored name, King James Bible, of the Old Covenants, because the Old Covenants, and I just prepared anyway, the Old Covenant, uh, King James, could be accurate, could be correct, as far as I know. I have to do more research on that. It's when you get into the New Covenant Textus Receptus that, as far as we know, it's been modified. Um, requires more research to see if the Old Covenant has been modified. Then Saul fell straight away all along on the earth and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all day nor all night. And the woman came unto Saul and saw that he was sore troubled and said, And behold, thy handmaid hath obeyed thy voice, and I have put my life in my hand. And have hearkened unto thy words, which thou speakest unto thee, unto me. Now therefore I pray thee, hearken thou also unto the voice of thy handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before thee, and eat, that thou mayest have strength. This is the treat. So for we got trick and treat when Saul treated himself to his enemy's stuff instead of wiping them all out and wiping their animals out. Now we got trick because he's coming to the witch that he just put the witches to death. Now he's coming and find another witch. And he's just going to get trick, right? The, the trick of, of Samuel coming up. And then, 
and got a treat because the witch is going to give him the treat now. So when thou goest on thy way, but he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants together with the woman compelled him, and he hearkened into her voice. So he arose from the earth and sat upon the bed, and the woman had a fat calf in the house, and she hasted and killed it, and took flour and kneaded it, and did bake unleavened bread thereof. And she brought it before Saul and before his servants, and they did eat. Then they rose up and went away that night. And I think one of the reasons that she had him do that is because she's afraid that if Saul didn't eat and he didn't survive and wasn't feeling good, then he wouldn't be able to say, hey, uh, don't kill the witch. Because he swore to Yahweh that he would make sure the witch lived. First Chronicles 10.13 So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against Yahweh, even against the word of Yahweh, which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of the one that had the familiar spirit to inquire of it. So, that's it. The wages of sin is death. Trick and treat, Halloween, the wages are death. There's uh, drugs in the candy that can kill you. Okay? I can't be very specific, I don't think, because YouTube has restrictions. But I guess if I'm not going to monetize the video, I can. I can talk about uh, fentanyl, methamphetamines, and all kinds of stuff if I'm not going to put any ads on the video. Judges 5. Uh, chapter 1, verses 24 through 27. Oh, so, verse 1 and verses 24 through 27 in Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 5, verses 1 and verses 24 through 27. Things saying Deborah and Barak, the son of Abonim, on that day saying, Blessed above women shall Jel, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, be blessed shall she be above women in the tent. He asked water and she gave him milk. She gave him a treat. Okay? She brought forth butter. In a noble dish, another treat. She put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with the hammer she smote Sisera. She smote off his head when she had pierced the stricken through his temples. With the, the stake went through his temples. And her feet bowed. He fell. He lay down at her feet. He bowed down. He fell where he bowed. bowed and there he fell down dead. That's the, the, the treat and then the trick. He's dead. Okay. She tricked him by giving him a treat and then killed him. Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 24. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye hath Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You're going to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's going to be the trick and the treat, right? The treat to trick him. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said to the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for Elohim doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, then and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave it unto her husband, also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So she lusted after it. What did she see? She saw it was good for food. She's hungry. She wants food. It tastes good. It's sweet, whatever. It tasted good, and it's pleasant to the eyes. That's what a lot of people look like on the outside, and a lot of things of this world. Even this shiny watch that's I got for 40 bucks that still works. I thought it was broken, but it still works. Yeah, it's something that's... Uh, pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired. I mean, you could even see someone that's rich, which, you know, had a whole bunch of, of gold or cash or silver or something, or a nice car, and you look at them and you think, oh, pleasant to be desired, right? I told you in the beginning, watch out for Miss Piggy. Watch out for people that look nice. They've got nice set hair and they look nice on the outside, but they're swine. They're swine. They act like swine. They eat swine. They, they may even partially look like swine. Pay attention and uh, just stay away from them, okay? But they're desirable physically. They're desirable. At least they look that way. Uh, but not to me. When I the, when I see people, it's, it's it's funny how you sometimes you can see things from the outside and from spirits and the way they act, and you can just you can tell that in the side they're swine. When when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she, she gave it to her husband with her and ate. He had to see that it was good for food, see all the all the, the things about it's good to the eyes, good for food, make one wise. And she desired it, and she gave it to her husband also to eat. 
And the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Sounds a little bit like Halloween. They get People get dressed and go trick-or-treat. And they heard the voice of Yahweh, Elohim, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of Yahweh, and Elohim amongst the trees of the garden. And I mean, normally during the year, if you dressed up the way people did on Halloween, a lot of people would be ashamed. They wouldn't go out that way. They wouldn't want to be seen. They'd cover themselves like Adam and Eve did in the garden after they sinned. But on Halloween, people flaunt it. They go out, they dress with no clothes on like strippers. They are prostitutes. They, they dress like monsters, hideous things. They dress all kinds of ways that they shouldn't. And they, they're not afraid. They're not ashamed. Right? They don't cover up. And Yahweh Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Uh, hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And Yahweh Elohim said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And then Yahweh Elohim said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And see, when you sin, it just demotes you. It just brings you down under someone else or, or the devil himself. Um, and his demons. You, you, you. When you subscribe to a different kingdom, you get a different ruler than Yahweh. And someone yesterday was asking me about voting and getting in the election system, and getting in the politics. And I know for some people, it's very hard for you to comprehend this or understand it unless you've experienced. I mean, if you break the law, like you break the Torah, and then there's consequences. A lot of people don't even notice the consequence because they think it's just part of life bad stuff just happens. But that's not true. It doesn't just happen, okay? There's blessings if you keep the law and the Bible, and there's curses if you don't. And sometimes what other people do affects you too. And sometimes, like Job, people are just tested. But you got to pay attention to everything that goes on in your life, okay? And the thing is, is that when you subscribe to the government, the man-made government, when you get involved with the man-made government, when you vote for them and support them and get involved, you come under the first Samuel 8 curse, which is where you're choosing a leader. Don't choose them, okay? If you support them and say, hey, people should vote for this guy, and you don't even vote, you can get cursed. That happened to me. I thought I was staying out of the first Samuel 8 curse. I supported the man that they call the sheriff here, and I got a ticket because I supported him. I came under the first Samuel 8 curse. I told people to vote for him. I shouldn't have done it. And then I came under the curse, okay? And so I decided I need to stay out of government, okay? And yes, people try to turn me against him, and it looks like there's a conspiracy. I've been told there's a conspiracy now against him uh, to get him out of office or something. I don't know. I'm staying out of the politics. I'm staying completely out of it. I'm not recommending him. Um, I don't know who the other guy is, but I'm not even going to get tempted to look because I'd either one of them and get involved in this election because I don't want to be under the first Samuel 8 curse. That's the trick. The trick is you get involved with another government, with another Elohim, with another uh, deity, because that's what the government is. See, Yahweh says he's our king, our lawmaker, and our judge. That's administrative and judicial and legislative. Right there in 1 Samuel 33, 22, I believe, it says, and he will save us. But if you're looking to someone else for salvation, like they did in 1 Samuel 8, where he said the king's going to fight their battles for them, the king, the government is going to fight their battles, it's going to help them out, even though they're going to tax them to death, uh, which, I mean, I taxed to death. I don't know if that's an exaggeration, but they're definitely going to be taxed. They're going to lose their children. They're going to lose um, a lot of things because they're agreeing to this government. And in CPS, Child Protective Services, definitely is taking a lot of people's children away. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of bad things that happen. So you don't want to have anything to do with the government. That's a trick. And they, they might say they're going to treat you. They might say, oh, well, we're not so bad. We'll We'll give you some of your money back. And we'll give you 
utilities and we'll give you dams and we'll give you internet and we'll give you all these things. But no matter how great the things are or they sound, it's still a trick. They steal from you and then they give back. It's a trick. Don't do it. The Bible tells us that if we didn't have taxes of man-made systems, I mean, we'd be rich because we only would have to give to Yahweh, right? And to the poor and the needy. We we would only have to to deal with his offerings and his things. But now, in addition to that, you've got like a 20% tax possibly or more or less uh, every year of your income because you subscribe to the government. So cancel your subscription with the government today, okay? No more, no more subscription. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and as he, see, that's the first thing, he hearkened unto the voice of his wife. Now, it's not bad to hear what she has to say. Just don't let her rule over you, okay? Don't let your wife be the final word, unless you agree. If you agree with what she's saying, that's great. But you got to be the final word, okay? That was his sin. His sin was he hearkened unto the voice of his wife. That's what it says here in Genesis and Bereshit. I'm not making it up. And hast eaten of the tree, which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the day of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return into the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living unto Adam, also unto his wife did Yahweh Elohim make coats of skins and clothe them. So at least Adam gave his wife a good name after she tricked him and led all of mankind astray for after she listened to the serpent and was tricked by the serpent. At least she didn't call him cursed. I mean, because you think Ad- Adam, it's like damned, right? We're all we were all damned before the Messiah because of Adam. And then there's Eve. And does that mean evil? I mean, you see what I'm saying? He could have he could have given her a bad name, but he didn't. So at least he was good. And Yahweh Elohim said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he be put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat life forever. See, you can't. Sin does not lead to life. It doesn't. It's the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. And we don't want to violate the law and the prophets. We don't want to violate any of the, the covenants, the commandments, the instructions in the Bible. Because it leads to death. Okay? Even the commandments of Paul. People say, well, commandments of Paul uh, were for for just certain people in the Bible. And no, Paul said that if anyone who rejects his commands is a false prophet. Right? At least one of his commandments he gave. He said that if people rejected the, their false prophet. And uh, that the commandments he got were from Yahweh. And some people say, well, he said he got them from natural law, from nature, that they just everybody knows, like it's from the Garden of Eden. Okay. Um, and other things he said he got from some sort of law. I don't know what law it was because it's not in the Torah, but he said he got it from law. Could be natural law. And therefore Yahweh uh, Elohim sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east end of the Garden of Eden cherubims and flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So dangerous Halloween candy. Uh, Like I said, it could have drugs in it. It could have razor blades. It could have needles. It could have anything in the Halloween candy. Don't do it. Just don't. Stay away from it. It's not good for your body anyway. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 8, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Yahweh, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. So when you violate the law, when you violate the commandments, the instructions of the Bible, and you subscribe to paganism, evil, sin, whatever it is, transgression of the law, then the devil may devour you. He's, he's got permission. He can mess with you at that point. So we need to be obedient and choose life, life more abundantly, so that the one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy can't mess with us, okay? And we got to trust in Yeshua Mashiach, the Savior, and receive salvation in Him. Children are taught to trust and obey Yahweh, and adults are taught lawlessness. That's true. Uh, a lot of children, the, the parents want them to obey uh, the Bible, and they want them to obey them, so they teach them obedience, they trust and obey. Right? They have them sing it in, in church and in Sunday school, trust and obey. Okay? 
So we're going to do a prayer, and then we're going to see if afterwards this video gets hacked by Reverend Twist Twist Truth, and he comes on here and gives you a message about twisting the truth. We'll see what happens from ianmichaelsmusic.com. So let's go ahead and do a salvation prayer and repentance and, and obedience, okay? And uh, I might share one more scripture with you that I saw today. I just might. Let me see here really quick. I got to, oh, I got to turn on my, my internet, I believe, so that I can see it. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to, because uh, I shared it on Facebook. I'd love to use the Torrent Network right now, but it's not compatible with this phone. I tried using the Torrent Network with this particular phone, and apparently my phone's too new. So, um, okay, here's one that I shared. Ezekiel 2011, uh, Good News Translation. I gave them my commandments and taught them my laws, which bring life to anyone who obeys them. Okay, and then they got a picture in the Bible of someone carrying the law, the scrolls, and it says, I gave them the commandments and taught them and my laws which bring life to anyone that obeys them even the law okay the law brings life that is what the bible says um okay apparently i have a job interview tomorrow another one so that's interesting i'll have to check that out later okay so we're going to say a prayer and then we're going to see if we get invaded and hacked by reverend twist truth at the end of the video so Stay tuned for that. It should be entertaining. Some people are going to laugh and they're going to enjoy it. And other people may be extremely offended. But either way, go ahead and watch it. All right. We're going to say a prayer. Yuev, we thank you and praise you. And you shall shake my name for all you've done for us, for sending your son to come and die for us on the cross and forgive us of sins. We confess you are Yahweh and that you sent your son to come and die for us on the cross and forgive us of sins. We have sinned against you. We have sinned against Yahweh. And we ask and thank you and for forgiveness of sins. You came and died for us on the cross to forgive us of sins, to be the final sacrifice. You paid the price for our sins so we wouldn't have to, so we wouldn't have to be punished. So we accept that. We ask for and accept it from you that we would no longer be under the law of sin and death, not in this world or the next. That we would, uh, you teach us your laws and instructions, that we would follow them, that you'd baptize us and give us your Rukh Kadesh, your Holy Spirit, and that you train us up as a good father, as a good Av, in the way we should go, that we would not depart from your law, your will, your word, your way, your instructions, your commandments, your word, the entire word. We pray we'd follow every word that proceeds the mouth of you, that we would not go to destruction, because your law is life, as it says, it's the way to life. And uh, and, and your son in salvation is the way to life. Uh, t treating others the way the Bible says to is the way to life. Obeying the Bible is the way to life. We're going to do the Bible way. And so we thank and praise you for that in Yeshua Mashiach's money. We pray you lead us into that, into righteousness in all people and their children and children's children for all generations. And we pray that uh, also you keep us on the straight and narrow path, that path to life, and don't let us go to the left or right. Put bumper bumpers around us, walls, uh, guardrails. Um, keep us keep us on that straight and narrow path. Don't let us jump the, the road. We thank you for that in Yeshua Mashiach's money. We thank you for signs, visions, miracles, and wonders, ways you can talk to us and tell us and train us and reading your word to follow you. In your Shem Sheikh's mind. And let us not be swayed by any evil spirit or unclean spirit, but let us know the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, and let us know your word. Because if we know your word, we cannot be swayed to the left or the right. We cannot be led astray if we fast and pray and we follow your commandments and we listen to your word and your spirit and we follow you in spirit and truth. So we thank you and praise you for that. That we get to be with you in heaven forever and ever and receive all good things. We also thank you so much that you put into the wicked ones and our enemies that come against us and do bad things to us and to others in this world that transgress your law, that make a bad uh, a bad example of the way to live, that call evil good and good evil, that train people in wickedness. We thank you for putting into them, but we pray they turn back to you instead and repent and learn righteousness and follow and do it and choose life instead of death. We thank you and praise in you, Shem Sheikh's mighty name above me, Okanas, thank you, imagine. And also... Uh, we thank you for every that for making us independent of the government and completely dependent upon you as our king, our lawgiver, and our judge, and our savior, our provider, our everything. That you'd be our everything, and we wouldn't go to the bad manager anymore. That we'd be set free. I just told someone about that story today. It's a story, not just a parable. And I'm going to tell the people now listening. When I worked for doing a remodel in a store, in retail, uh, we had a bad manager, and we were set free by you away from the bad manager. And so what happened was is the boss came 
asked me what was going on, saw me as being faithful and true, so I told him the manager would not let us complete the tasks that the boss had given us to do. And so he, he set me over some people and set us free from the bondage of that taskmaster, and we did great. But when one of the employees, the associates, the employees that was working with me, went back to the previous manager, uh, the previous manager screamed at that man, and he came back and told me, and I said, why did you go back to the task manager? Don't do that. Don't do that. We're out. We've been set free. We've been set free from that. So I thank you, Yoav, that we're set free from the government, that we're set free from the kings of this world, that we don't go back to them. We're not tempted to go back to them, or back to Egypt or Rome or the United States or anybody, or the United Nations or any any systems of this world, any doctrines of man, any uh, false preachers, teachers. Uh, and, and yes, they're paid. A false False preachers get paid. They get paid to teach lies, to, to, to agree with each other and to stand up for each other and twist the truth. And so we rebuke that in Yusha Mashiach's mind and we command it to be cast down. We cast it down and we stomp on it and we're not going to participate that in, in that anymore. In Yusha Mashiach's mind and we're not going to subscribe to that. But we don't ask the, ask the command. We can weep with those who weep. We can mourn with those who mourn. And we can attend weddings and, and funerals and things like that. But we are not going to subscribe to the wickedness in this world. And we're not going to participate and anything the Bible tells us we can't participate in. We thank you and praise you for that. And you show me shakes my name above the milk dance. Thank you, imagine. And we thank you for every way you speak to us. Through your word, through prayer, through through visions, dreams, signs, miracles, wonders, visions, creation, all good things. But we pray that above all else, we would hold fast to your word and to your spirit that we'd know what's true. And not get caught off in the familiar spirit. People think there's a spirit out there that tells them to violate the Bible, that they don't have to follow anymore. That is not the Ruach HaKodesh. That is not the Holy Spirit. Because Paul and the prophets both said twice each, so that's four times in the Bible, that the new covenant, the new covenant is that the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, will compel us and cause us to keep the law and take away our stony hearts and give us a law of flesh, a heart of flesh that will follow after you all of our days and that the heart is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That Pentecost, the first Pentecost, was the day the law was given. The second, the next Pentecost that we have, which is in the New Covenant, um, was the one with the giving of the Holy Spirit so that we can keep the law. So we thank you and praise you for that in your Shem and Sheik's mighty name. Above me, I can't stand, imagine. And yes, the Hebrew name for, pass, or for, for Pentecost is quite different. It is not Pentecost. It is a Hebrew word. I believe it begins with an S. So if you want to look that up, they can look that up. But I thank you for that in your Shem and Sheik's mighty name. Above me, I can't stand, imagine. We pray for all people. And the children and children's children for all generations to receive all these things and walk in spirit and truth humbly before you forever and ever. And we thank you for that, that they could walk in your blessings now and come out of the darkness, come out of the curse and receive your blessings. We thank you and praise you for that. And you shall my my name above me. I'll dance, thank you, imagine. Yahweh Av, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your Kadosh, 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 your holy, 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 your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. And please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Wait a minute. Wait. Something's happening. I think we're getting hacked by Reverend Twist Truth again from the mainstream media. How's it happening? How's it happening? Quick. Like, turn it off. Turn off Twist Truth. Get rid of the television. Before it's too late. No, it's out of my control. Ah! Such a learned man Who am I to argue with the sea of OG And he's been set free He's been redeemed Thinks he's delivered from The ways of Elohim The pork chop eaten Sabbath breaking Sunday Keeping liberated man Yeah, now there goes Reverend Twist Truth He's doing it again Preaching that the Sabbath day is not for modern man He's been set free, he's been redeemed Thinks he's delivered from the ways of Elohim The pork chop eaten, Sabbath breaking, Sunday keeping liberated man He's 
got an explanation for Colossians 2.16 He's got a mistranslation that can prove just what he means He doesn't take the time to stop and learn the Father's ways Cause he's too busy Christianizing pagan holidays Poor old Reverend Twister, why is he so confused? Teaching that the Holy Torah is only for the Jews He's been set free He's been redeemed Eating Sabbath breaking Sunday keeping liberated man Also, while it's still on the internet, check out BibleCourts.com. And if you can help out with funding to keep that online, that would be great. I do want to start over and take all the ads off that site and redo it. I want some time to refresh that site and redo it. But I do need the web server, and I do need the domains. So if you guys want to support, that's great. Um, I'm trusting Yahweh Av that, however, whether it's out of my own pocket or whatever, I will be able to afford that. And electricity to stay warm in this house maybe even the video studio outside and, and good things like that. I won't have to stand here in front of a blanket. So thanks so much. <laughs>